Thank you so much, Pastor Thomas. Of course, we give you our embrace for him, for our dear, our dearly beloved brother. Amen. Amen. This is God in our absence. We are so grateful. Yahweh remains the only true and living God. Amen. He is faithful for all or to all generations. And God want him. And Yahweh remains the only true and living God. Amen. He is the only true and living God. Every other God is false. I remind the saints that I am maybe the most religiously intolerant person again. I don't believe in religious tolerance. I don't tolerate nonsense. I don't tolerate anything that's false or fake according to my faith. I was never saved to be tolerant of what is false. If Yahweh's word says that every other God is false and dead, then I will proclaim the same thing. The Constitution of Guyana affords me the right to propagate or to say or spread my religious beliefs as well as any other guy Amen. I'm yet to understand why Muslims become offended when I say that you're false. You could tell me I'm false and I'm not offended. Mm -hmm. And normally the one who gets offended knows why they are offended. Mm -hmm. I told a Hindu, I told a Hindu that before that he is false. Or his religion is false. He goes, I get offended. He called my phone actually. Thank you so much. He called me and he said, Why are you saying it is isn't false? I said, Why you can't say it by the is false? See, but you're offended. I said, Why are you offended? I'm not offended. You could tell me. He said, I wouldn't tell you. I would never tell you what you believe in is false. I said, Because it's true. <laughs> right? Say, What you believe in is false. And we had a good, healthy, manly discussion which ended his feelings being very hurt. Because if I say that it's my right to say the truth false, then you're false. I believe, I believe that I serve the only true and living God. Yes. I believe this one. I don't mind how modern the world becomes. Yahweh is the same yes. yesterday, yes. today and forever. Amen. The modernization of the world doesn't change who your God is. He doesn't adjust his standards either. So I'm grateful to be with you today. Amen? Amen. I'm certainly grateful to stand here alive. Not too well, but alive. Possibly I don't know what it is. My throat started feeling very weird. I'm there. If I die, death comes to all. I don't know if he is bad or not. It must be old age. Is it old age, Pastor? Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. I don't answer to that. I am cold, but I may be old. <laughs> but I'll be alright. So, Yahweh instructed me to speak to saints about wisdom. Wisdom. Wisdom, I started this about a week ago or two weeks ago, and he said to continue to speak to the church about wisdom. Because it is highly unfortunate that there are so many people who are supposed to be saints who do not function with wisdom. What is even more tragic is that there are many of them who despise wisdom, though they're supposed to be saints. Let me hasten to tell you that there's a distinction between the wisdom of Yahweh and the wisdom of the world. To those on Facebook and other social media platforms, welcome to you. Um, today I'm abandoned by just for my entire household. Everybody is somewhere else. <laughs> now, that's what happens when they grow up. They grow, they grow up. Yeah. Right. There's the wisdom of the world, and there is the wisdom of the hour. Saints, you are not supposed to be governed by the wisdom of the world. What is tragic is that there are people who are supposed to be saints who love the wisdom of the world. And they want to reason and serve Yahweh according to the wisdom of the world. Saints are called to function by the wisdom that comes from Yahweh. It conflicts with that of the world. It's against the wisdom of the world and it's normally sometimes 
offensive or always offensive to the wisdom of the world. Yahweh's wisdom is the principal thing. It is the most important attribute of who is that you can possess. Wisdom is found in the very essence of who Yahweh is. Saved people, I talk the same to Jesus, saved people who believe in Yeshua HaMashiach are supposed to be wise people. What I find interesting is that Yahweh is said to speak to the church about wisdom and bring it into your homes, which would be highly offensive to me. Titus, sorry Titus, let's start with Titus. Titus, show the to Titus about how things should be conducted in the church. Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2. Why are you, why are you some years searching to find it? Because you don't believe I read the truth to you, no problem. Fine. Because you need to see. Sometimes I didn't see things with a silly own eye, and then you see somebody else's eye. It, it works wonders for you. So Shaul instructed Titus as to how we should function in the church. And he said, verse, chapter 2, verse 1, we did a promise, chapter 4, that's the main text, but Titus chapter 2. But you, Titus, explain what kind of behavior goes along with sound teaching. Explain to the people. What kind of behavior goes along with sound teaching? And I'm amazing that Pastor started to speak. It seems as if we were in each other's mind, but that's how the spirit of the functions. Tell the older men to be serious, sensible, self-controlled, and sound in their trust or faith. Love and perseverance. Older men are not supposed to be weak people. Guyana has got a lot of older politicians who are chickens because they're not functioning by the wisdom of Yahweh. Older men are supposed to be serious. Yes, it's in the scripture. We don't play. So in the church, if the people are offended easily by the posture of the older men, you have a problem. Mm -hmm. Because we are supposed to be serious. Mm -hmm. yes. We're not your friends. Mm -hmm. Now we started good. I didn't start up on it, so I get mad at anybody. Say, oh, please. So please be nice to me. <laughs> We're massage to me, so you can't drink. Older men are not supposed to be your friends. They're not supposed to make you feel good. That's not our responsibility. The responsibility of the older men, you'll see it, has a lot to do with how younger men are trained. Yeah. Yeah. Older men must be serious. It does mean that we're not going to be humorous, so we're not going to be friendly to you. But when it comes to the issues of life, yes. when it comes to directing you in life, we are supposed to be serious people. Oh, right. If as a young man we see that you can find eight, nine, seven, ten, whatever hours in a day to do absolutely nothing, we are supposed to be serious. Right. And say to you, find something to do that is productive. I don't understand how younger men, with all the strength you have, cannot be productive and find something to do that is rewarding to you financially and in any other way. I am not in the habit of giving money to younger men who have strength and the ability to work. Don't worry, I'll get warm in a minute. Feel my strength coming. <laughs> if you're a young man and you have the ability to work, don't ask an old man for money. Yeah. Yeah. 
My father, when I was a boy, used to ask me, what have you done? And as a child, I didn't understand that question, which was getting me mad. But he was teaching me that to get money, there has to be work done. It's a principle you're learning as a young man. You get money thrown to all the time. What have you done to me to give you money? Right. And I figured it out back then. P9 is, is the I don't know if you used to drive, I used to wash P9 and then say, Daddy, from down to the show, Daddy! I wash P9! I wash it at Rover. You know what comes next? 50 cents. Because I'm not going to that. <laughs> You're going to ask me 25 cents, you can't give me what did I do? I watched the vehicle now, so give me 50 cents. What's a business fun? Somebody said I got to get a dollar. If it's nasty, but yes, you got to pay me straight because you told me what did I do. But I tell you what I did. Daddy, I'm sweeping the bottom house. Because I want pay. I learned to work for money. Because the older men are supposed to be serious. When I was eight or seven years old, my pants had a rip. I was shouting, Mommy, look my pants there. My grandfather walked along and said, Come here! Why is he talking? I thought, I thought that was God talking something. Okay, okay, yeah. His voice was deep. Oh, come here. Yes. I tripled on to my grandfather. He said, You just call your mother? For what? Because the older men back then, though they didn't know this, they were serious with young boys. Yes. 
Yes. Now you got a set of little boys and you touch them. <laughs> we are filled, but we do not fail you. That's why I love my brother Apostle Thomas and others. We train ourselves to be men. You must be a man because the older men must be serious. They must be sensible. I can't stand a gray-headed fool. <laughs> sensible. Self-control. Older men are not supposed to lose their cool every second. You're mad at everything around you. Sound in your faith. Love and perseverance. Verse 3. Likewise, tell the older women. Ladies, you didn't support me just now. Let's go now. Tell the older women to behave the way people living a holy life should behave. They should not be slanderers. See, men, you must not risk to talk for me. To talk and pull people down. The older women. I know some in the Jesus Church have perfected this thing. As some mothers in the Jesus Church, they sit from the time you walk to the door and start. See what? And they start to tear the young women down. You can't breathe with them. They gotta talk about your dress. If not to dress, you talk about your hair. Then from the time they see you somebody that's your man. Your own ways of time self. And so pastors, wives, you are old and you're nasty in terms of your mouth. Yes. Fucking mouth. Feeling strong now. <laughs> Slanderers in the church. It should not be. The old woman should not slander people. That's what it said. Some of them gather for prayer. And then they pray for one hour, 45 minutes. They talk to somebody in. In the prayer too. And in the prayer, yes. when they don't say, let's pray. About what? Slanderers in the church should not be found, especially among older women. Because if, if, if old women like to slander people, then the young ones will learn to do the same thing. Yes. He said, neither should you be slaves to excessive drinking. <laughs> they can't be in church while they're drunk. It can't be a drunk kid church mother. Right. <laughs> they should teach what is good. Mm -hmm. We come into the house now because wisdom is not found. Wisdom must be found in the safe. Training the younger women to love their husbands. We saw last week as Pastor Vicky, Apostle Vicky, his wife, I told you all. That younger women are taught how to love a man. Yes. Yes. So half of y'all look up, I love you, I love you, no, no, love is in the first place. To so many young women in the church, love is a feeling. Yeah. Not a commitment. Mm -hmm. Not a lesson they learn. It's just how you feel. You give me butterfly in my stomach. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, sex is really need a deal. And when I see my just I feel something, you feel something. And then when you get married, you want to have the man because you want to to love him. Train the young women to love their husbands. Oh, let's go to this one here now. And their children. There are women in the church who do not love their own children. And I'll tell you why you don't love them. Because if you love a child, you don't let them go wayward and go their own way and do their own thing. Amen. And amen. the rules cover and disrespectful. Uh -huh. You are saying that now. Amen. The older women must teach you how to love your children. Right. I can't understand how some mothers, younger mothers, your child is a burden. Mm. The father goes out to work when he comes back home, the child is in the same condition. Don't buy it now. Stop eating any talk. Losing any talk now. Listen to me. The young, the young woman must learn how to take care of children, how to love them. Love 
the child is good, training the child on it should grow. Yes. So the wealth is all the only part from it. Yes. Yes. Love the child includes having a whip yes. or a belt. Right. They must know it. Yes. Yes. The only guy talks about you too much now my mother had a brown belt, I will never forget. Oh. And everywhere I had the belt, I don't know how she could find it, she had a lamb or something. <laughs> Oh, yeah, she beat me on a high level and said, don't give me here. And mommy just knew where to find it. I couldn't find the right hiding place with the belt. Yeah. I got the most sex. I hope you're watching me today. Me, you short self. This is what people say, tell me if you want to kill me, boy. I said, I'm going to kill you. But it kept me out of jail. Well, she just saw something in me that said, you got a whole criminal line up in her head you. My mother said, this boy is terrible. I wasn't bad, but she just saw me being bad, maybe. I don't know. Because she used to beat me back. <laughs> now you got to hide the belt. Now that I'm older, and now that I'm wise, I'm thankful for every time mommy used to cut my teeth. Right. Six feet up. Yeah. One time she said, my friend, my boy, oh, you tell my friend to catch me to beat me a man. You can't send me to catch me because I was running. I never started with technology. I used to run away. So she said, my two friends, to catch me to bring me back. And when they come here, they say, you come to catch me to get next. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought, let me not get beat but I know you will suffer blows because you got to man. You my boy, and you find me to get this. Why are you running away, sir? But... My mother used to deal with my case. It is what love is. Train a child. That you can't have your own way. Some days, tell them if you don't do this, you're not going anywhere. Training a child. Oh God, I'm going mad now. Your child is not trained by this I don't care how you have the mothers now. You got the easy way out. Put it in front of a tablet, put on something and then watch. Pinky pink, pokey pink, whatever you pick me. Pinky pink, what pink name? Who? Never pick. Who do you want to never pick? A wild heart. And, and your child is raised by a tablet. Because it's an easy way to bring attention to the child. Now, some of them don't know how to scroll. And they scroll and start seeing what they shouldn't see. Wow. Yes. And hearing what they shouldn't hear. And you're going to ask them, now where you get that from? From what you give me to watch. Our children can become dependent on devices because they don't have instruction to do other things. Every so often I tell you, man, I live for say, turn it off. Go outside. Ride a bicycle. Yeah. Rest, I saw with two big bandages on the knee. Make an X. Walk to the left, walk to the right. So, how you get that? He tapped me down and said, Daddy was running the front. He said, Good, hallelujah. If your knee gets ripped, that's a good sign for me, boy. You look you're legit. When you check my office, you got bumps and bruises, marks and scars. And that's what I want. That's great. I want a soft skinned boy. Yes. Right. 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 And his mother did not come out of the mother. Ah, you know that. But a little boy I tell her, he dead. Once he heard him, he dead. When he go quiet, he dead. When he get black up. So if he's screaming in the yard, leave him alone. If, he, if he's silent, when he falls, he get black up. Once he get up and scream, he's alive. I sent me a video the other day, I was going to tell marvelous upside down the bicycle, pick up in the street. So a man passed my bike and go rescue him, because he tip over. Since his, his sister said it, Marvy just fell, and it took long to get up. So she felt it was him, and I said, he's dead. At least he rode again. He said, it's you. She said, it's the same thing, the man told him, go again. I like that. I mean, you commend that young man, he told him, go again. Go one more time, up the road again. Yes. You got to raise the children right, mothers, because you have to learn that loving your child, especially your son, is helping him to understand that sometimes you fall, you get up. You get bruised, but you're still alive. Don't raise a little soft boy. Right. Let me give you one more now. Don't prevent your son from being corrected by his father. Especially if when you see a boy father, we're still. Yeah. Especially.
mention this right here. Don't teach a boy child that you are going to stand between him and correction. You're raising a criminal. And a failure as a man. I know sometimes you all think you're too rough. But a father understands future. A father understands legacy. A father understands generational power. In raising a boy the right way. And some mothers don't like to see their sons be corrected. I want me to move up from there. Nope. Mm-hmm. Moving yet. Nope. Raise your children. Raise your girls to be girls. Mm-hmm. They ain't women. Mm-hmm. They're right. girls. Right. Raise them according to their age. Yes. They don't belong in adult conversation. Amen. All right. Amen. Amen. They are girls. You on the phone and they can hear you talking to somebody else. Uh-huh. Adult conversation, they want to know why they get that woman. You are a girl. They're not in their friend, they're, they're a daughter. You teach them how to be girls. Yes. Just like a girl. Uh-huh. And eight and nine, you're a big lipstick and you shall lash. Big country for your face. Foundation in the house. <laughs> no. You need to teach them how to be girls. Right. Train the young women to love their children. Some mothers don't know how to care for their own offspring because they're never taught to do it. When the baby has a cold, they will say, suck it up, put it on the nose. Some of you other ones are dead in here. You're going to black one over. I used to pull it out, she kind of married nose. Because I was sometimes a man. When I discovered I was having a girl child, I took a doll, took a dolly, them dolly thing, and it's with a girl, and start planting the dolly here. <laughs> Gotta learn it. I learned how to comb my daughter's hair. I didn't do it well, but not little. Right. How to comb her. So I put it, put it, the, the slide in the road to the end, because I have a girl child. Yes. To bathe and dress her, prepare her properly. Because it's my daughter. Yes. Verse 5. Let's go. Teach them to be self-controlled. So you see, the, 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 the older men must be self-controlled. Young women must be self-controlled. They've been taught now. And pure. Oh, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Teach the younger wives to be pure. You all hear? Yes. Amen. Young wife, ask yourself, what kind of thought do you have with your wife? Or you all hear the part? You move on in. They teach them to take good care of their homes. We're going to talk in a minute. Teach them to take good care of their homes. Lord have mercy. Teach them to take good care of their homes. Come as you have ministries, Congress International, we have the other one, you say, wherever you are, we are not called to be people of Yahweh and nasty at the same time. If you have to make, send it and get a small one. But don't be a woman who can't take care of your house. It is written. Now watch this. The woman's responsibility is primarily to care for the children and the home. The man will help you in it. He's a helper. He can take the burden off your shoulder. And husbands, women appreciate that high Let's see, positive. Positive is a smart man. But Lady O knows how to do it. Yes. You understand the difference? Yes. She is assisted in doing it, but she knows how to do it. Right. But how can you be a wife, safe, sanctified, and free from rough accommodation, and you, your job is to watch TV or be on the phone? Wow. 
power. <laughs> That's the only thing, two things you can do. When your husband is all around the house doing everything else, your job is to what see me? Be on the phone. Because you're too pretty to do housework. Since your mommy never taught you how to do it. Let's go to the big word now, the first word in the church. And teach them to submit to their husbands. Woo! Your person? Amen. Yes, sir. Sisters? I don't hate you. What a God is saying, I don't hate you. I love your back. That's the territory. Even in Yeshua. Most of our women do not know how to submit to us. Even in the church. We have a cultural problem when it comes to submission. Because for years, women in the church were taught to be your own woman. Women empowerment. Uh -huh. Women's conference is about empowering women, girl power. You weren't trained to submit to your husband. And I, mean, I say with all pain in my heart that husband don't make it easy for some of y'all But a woman is wired to submit to a man. You have to go quiet all you want. I know this part the quiet part. Because you like this part. You are never made to rule a man. Right. You are made to submit to a man's authority. And it is something that you learn to do through the old. But if you got an older woman who like cuts up shop, what do you do? Do you understand your husband's position when it comes to the spiritual values of your home? Do you? Do you know what your husband stands for in terms of spiritual values? If in my house I say, listen to me, the Messiah's name is Yeshua, we shall refer to the Messiah as Yeshua. The Father is Yahweh. He will not be using Jesus in his house. I made that prayer to my wife. Now once I say that to you, you come and tell me, I care what you said. I go, well, I'll tell you Jesus. And then you go to church and say, I'm a submissive wife. In church, I want to testify that I, I submit because the Lord said that I'm a prophet to everyone who you're a liar. That's what you are. Because if you, if you submit to your husband, he tells you, even spiritual marriage, you will submit to it. Right. You have to submit to it. Because you can't tell that you're a godly woman who can't submit. A godly woman knows how to submit to authority. And a godly man knows how to demonstrate authority. Right. Amen. Amen. Right. Learn how to submit to your husband. Mm -hmm. Why are you coming for you to swear? <laughs> There's a weight in the room. Because now if we get to this part, there's a weight in the room. Younger is talking to younger women. Younger women, you need to learn how to submit to your husbands. What Rock Agnes revealed to me is that many of the young women in church, you, you function by agreement, not submission. You only do what you agree with. So if you disagree, you have to try and convince them to do what you say. That's what submission is agreement. Do you do what you don't want to when your husband tells you? And some of you always say, tell you, he can't tell me nothing. I could tell you always pray, he can't tell me nothing. No man can tell me what to do. Really? I told you what I was trained by Walter London. Errol London. Joseph Mamba. I'll show you my real man. Meet your little soft, he's soft, he's chicken man. My grandmother, my father's mother, used to call my grandfather daddy. Daddy. I tell you he was a beast. He was a, he was a terror. But he loved her. She knows he loved her, but she don't care it. Because you know, she knew he had it, but I got a mad cry from him. I had come from my ground. He had it straight. I want to tell you something because it is a, as a father to some of your young women. My grandfather had a woman. It's not a good thing. He had it. But he was no sin. And he was out one night past a mark and my grandmother decided. It's a little short sale that she's going to fight him. 
So she got out of the house and thought about the teaching. And no one told the story. She got on the train line in Pesa as the final grandfather in the world. And you know, back then, the boy put a crack his way, shot open the very bad man. He tore and the shot open. And she grabbed the shirt. So she found him now. And hold the shirt. And, and Uncle Bang, I told Uncle Bang, lose the shirt in her hand around him. <laughs> Lock the door! <laughs> so, there you are, shut up now and uh, open the door! Open the door! Daddy, open the door! My grandfather said, Where were you? <laughs> what do you go out of my house? This is all the night. You're being with this man! Ah, this man, you what? And you come out and mash up the yard? Yeah, but she knew it, man. My grandmother said she's not allowed to say, What? I said, Thanks. You, he said, watch me out of my house. How you could leave my house at the night? There's only one thing when I'm left on the night. By the time she got a chance, I choose him. He said, I just pulled the first punch. My grandfather went off. She learned a lesson though. Because she taught my mother a lesson. Don't go looking for no man. You're quite the only one. Stay in your house. Oh, see that? Oh. He who knows his house will find it. <laughs> but you got women in the church who training young women to be to be to be fire like that what you call it. You say, let me talk. Sanctify. I'm cussing out. Who are you doing in the church? Uh -huh. Because the old women are teaching y'all how to behave in this man. The, the scripture says, be submissive to your husband. Don't fight him. If somebody look you become a man and not be the wrong talk. Some of your husband in the church can say, quit. Who you got this? Let's have a heart to heart, heart conversation today. The scripture instructs the young woman to be submitted to your husband. Young men, you must learn how to demonstrate authority in the house. You don't know all of your children to live God. Okay. But a wife understands when a man has authority. She sees it. She can sense it. She knows when you have confidence in yourself as a man. And may I inform you before you go to Proverbs that when you have confidence as a man, you don't have to announce that you're a child of house. All right. Amen. All right. Amen. The first sign of weakness is when you have to tell the house that you're a child. Yes. Don't do this, this don't do it. You have to be a bit terrible. Mm -hmm. Because you have to have specific, specific order, value, system established in your house. And your wife must submit to that. Most importantly, that which is spiritual. All right. Now look at this. In this way, if she submitted, Yahweh's message will not be brought into this grace. Now let me just touch another before I leave. If I go to Proverbs. If a wife, a young woman, knows how to love her husband, knows how to train her children well, to be self controlled and pure, Take care of yourself and submit to your husband. The message of Yahweh will not be brought into this grace. Do you hear me? Amen. Young girl women in the church, you can cause the message that we preach to be brought into this grace because of your behavior. Right. Is that serious? Especially if the man is not in the church. You can cause what is preached to be brought into disrespect. Because the first thing I ask is, what what time does he charge them? What do you mean he didn't teach you? Right. Did he teach you to cuss me up? You see how important it is for you to learn as a young woman because your behavior can cause the message of Yahweh to be brought into this grace. Similarly, urge the young men to be self-controlled. Everybody was told about self-control. The older men, the younger women, the older women, and the younger men. Everybody must have self-control. 
It's not a cuss word. It's a healthy thing to have. Do you have control of yourself as a woman or as a man? When you have self-control, situations don't dictate how you function. You don't respond to them. You control every environment you get. When you have self-control, people gain more respect for you than anything else. Because they can't push them up to make you anything. When you have self-control, you determine the outcome of situation. Not them. And the fruit of the Spirit includes your having self-control. From chapter 4. Listen children, verse 1. To Father's instruction. Pay attention in order to gain insight. Now we're diving into the deep ocean here. For I'm giving you good advice. So don't abandon my teaching. For I too was once a child to my father. And my mother too thought of me as a special darling. He, my father, taught me. He said to me, let your heart treasure my words. Keep my commands and live. Where are the sons? You wonder why the young men die like a like flying rope? I just told you why. Keep my commands and live. No, this is not Yahweh's commandment. This is a father telling a son, if you want to live, keep my word. The father who tells his son, boy, don't ride him on the bike so fast. Right. Simple as that. Uh-huh. And the son can't listen to that because after all, that is that. Of the world. 
So some of you didn't go back to your house now. You've got friends who encourage you. You to disregard your husband's authority in the house. Because they'll tell you, God, you can't go out after no man. Me? I would never do that for you. First of all, you have a man. Uh-huh. So how you come to the house where you look for a man when you got up? <laughs> Wisdom will tell you to preserve your environment as a wife. If you know that your husband holds fast the teachings of the righteous apostles, how could you have friends who make you turn away from it? Mm-hmm. Or a mother who makes you turn away from it? And makes you feel that, oh yeah, Jesus is not a problem. Jesus is a problem because it's a lie. Right. All right. And there are young women in the church, young women in the church who believe that it's not so dangerous to encourage people around your church who lie. Because after all, you go way back. So because you go way back, you can't cut them off. Because if you cut them off, it's a friendship that was meant to last forever, really. When it comes to your children's soul, you don't play with it. I can move. I'm afraid of what I'm going to do. I'm going to jail, man. I'm going to jail. When it comes to these children, so what do you do? You don't have anybody around these children who could tell them that Jesus is this is a nice Jesus. Listen to me. Don't play with it. Amen. Don't play with it. When he comes to my house, and my son's spiritual will be in, I am the most serious spiritual level fan. I'm the nice person here. When it comes to my son's spiritual learning, I don't play with them. There is nobody who calls my step, my yard, my gate, and tell my son about Jesus. Because after all, you know, you know, um, Marvin could give it anything. I would kick you so far around, so you would be a true shock. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. Are you coming back? Yes. Right. I ain't got cousin in this. And he was the other side of Do you know it? But if you see your only if, if your friend only if, so let the only. If your friend only decide, oh no. If she only decide one day to tell me, man, you can't tell him to go because after all it's so bad. Do you know it? I tell you, she will never try it. Because the first thing got to come and, 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 and bring me. He's going to tell you for him. If you could tell me that whoever telling my son this foolishness is not bad, you need to follow them too. Yeah. Wisdom. I'm telling you because if you're not careful as a man, your whole generation will fall into error and ruin yeah. because of friendship with the world and evil people. Yeah. There's none of your name to tell you that people know what you need. I cannot find one even here who could tell me that by now, your people who you know, you know, don't know what to believe. Mm-hmm. You could tell me that? No. Mm-hmm. Say so they know what you believe in, how could they come and tell your children something different? Right. And you say it's not such a big deal? No. It's a big deal. It's the biggest of these when it comes to spiritual well being because at the end of the day, if you're bound in wisdom, she will not keep you. They've been in the Baptist church and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, the worst person to abandon is wisdom. Mm-hmm. Yep. Because a fool despises it. Amen. A yes. foolish person abandons wisdom yep. and they wonder why they're in trouble. Mm-hmm. You, can't, you can't forsake wisdom and don't realize what we'll do to you afterwards. Wisdom protects the righteous. Mm. You must love it. Wisdom will tell you when anyone is foolish. Come on, church, amen. amen. Wisdom will tell you that what you are doing is nonsensical and stupid. Wisdom will say, don't do that. It doesn't make any sense to do it. Right. That's wisdom. And I'm amazed at how many saints are supposed to be saints who don't like wisdom. Oh. Because you come to a boss Thomas for counsel, and when he gives you the counsel, you go do something else. Because the wise counselor is too tough for you to deal with. Wisdom trains you to know how to function. 
The beginning of wisdom, this part blows me away. For sin. The beginning of wisdom is to get wisdom. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. Yes. The first thing to do with getting wisdom is to be wise is getting wisdom. Yes. Amazing. The beginning of wisdom is to get it. Yes. You want to be a wiser man? And then a person want to be wise and find wisdom. That's the first thing to know. What wisdom looks like. Wisdom, and those on Facebook you normally know, type things for people to see later on. Listen to me. Wisdom is insensitive. Yeah. You have to be careful. Wisdom doesn't care about what you see. That's why this comes by most church people don't like it. Because wisdom don't play with your feelings. Yeah. Wisdom is always principled in all function. Wisdom is hardcore, straight all the time. That's why some people don't like wisdom. If your car tire is smooth, wisdom tells you don't go beyond a certain speed on wet roads or on gravel road. That's wisdom telling you that. And you decide, and that is the wisdom. Wisdom is insensitive, because wisdom will do to you, run you in the bush. Break up your hand. Sorry, US people, break your hand. <laughs> Break up your foot. And when you're in the hospital, you lay one leg up, the other leg up, your two hands, one leg up, then we said, they're not telling you. Right. Not to do it. Wisdom will come find you. It's in Wisdom is insensitive because wisdom is principled. Wisdom is less concerned about how you feel and more concerned about what you do and how you function. Get it. If you cherish wisdom, she will exalt you, young lady. Young mother, young wife, if you cherish wisdom, wisdom will exalt you. If you despise wisdom, wisdom will bring you to nothing. Do you cherish wisdom as a wife? Do you cherish wisdom as a father, as a husband? How do you know when a child cherishes wisdom? You don't be mad at your mother for correcting you. You don't stop talking to your father because he's correcting you. When your father tells you, do not go out looking like that, that's wisdom. Because he's a man and knows what men don't see. That's wisdom. You don't fight wisdom. When your old grandmother tells you, boy, don't do that. Girl, don't do that. She knows what she's talking about. Because she's been there before. They normally tell her that I've been there before you. This is why they tell you that, that they've been this world before you. Wisdom will teach you how to live. And it will exalt you as a child. I have never met a woman who hates a wise man. Watch this. Unless she is a fool. Mm -hmm. Say that again. I, I have never met a woman who hates a wise man unless she is a fool. And the sad reality is that some men are lucky to find foolish women. I don't know what some skill you get. You got a special grace <laughs> to find some mad head <laughs> who don't like wisdom. You haven't met some military, I don't care what you say. I don't care what happened. They don't do whatever it is. They don't, they don't care the whole house fall off. You don't know, like that. You don't let me talk about it. There's some women who, if they know that you got a woman in this house, a person, they don't want to the house. Now tell me if you're in mad. When you want the house, you're living. Want the woman, man. Want the shop. Don't want the house. Oh, cook the barbecue and fell in the open house. <laughs> you were born in the old house. So where you living my life? All the time is done. You got one car. You can't afford another car. And because you get some woman, you broke up the car. So we 
the work on it. And that's wisdom for you. That's wisdom for you. Break up everything. I care and break up everything. And when you say break up everything, you're going to pass it down. You can be down. You have to give me a job. You're going to pay a taxi to go down the road because you don't have sense. Right. You got a whole big brick in your hand. And the man got woman in the car. Why you bring the car? Break the woman, man. Since you want to bring somebody, don't break her, break him. Right. But somebody I would want the car and break it up. I go break up this car. I don't care. I go break up everything. I start breaking the natural and I say, hold on. How am I going to walk tomorrow? Because that's what the big pressure of God. No, that's what the catch me. Don't make from the star reasoning with yourself. No, no, hold on. I can't afford a windshield. They got car posts, it's not, it's not, you, you, get, you get this cash tape. I see you there, the plastic pulling across to, to make windshield look crazy. Something on the head ain't good. Wisdom don't touch like that, you can't be making a windshield with the plastic back. Don't break it if you can't buy it back. Right. Wisdom will make you understand that you don't react without sense. That's wisdom. There's a reason why the old man is falling down and the man come home and they say, oh, you come back, all right. Mm-hmm. And they didn't want the young girls. But this generation, oh, Lord have mercy. The older women, they have to go all around the world, you come back home, it's food is ready. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was telling you because my grandmother was like that. His food is cooked. She doesn't say go back and eat where I come from. His food is prepared. Mm-hmm. His food is on the table. Yes. He's still the head of the house. You don't tell him, tell him, look, you're not going to find cause they older men know that those older cats, them older men, they're in the wood. Right. So the house is still clean. She's still ready. And all right, come home and sit like a king. And he, but this younger crew we got here, she on the phone. And the whole world must see. Look at coming home, look. Look for look. Watch it coming home. I want the whole world to see. Thomas is now. You're not the only Thomas in here. I hope you find. <laughs> Thomas is coming home. He's been an Angie. I hope you only imagine that in here. <laughs> Thomas come from Angie's house. And, and you tell the whole world the problem of faith. Uh-huh. Yes. I feel that you made a mark because somebody hit like and love and yes and somebody support you, girl. It was me. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yes. And it left that dark. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I'm back up now. Yeah. Come on, girls. Come on. And Thomas pack me back, and the same will tell you that. Hi, Thomas. Give us a couple of mornings. I'm poor, you. Tom, gone. Not this Tom, you. You're losing, Thomas. He got, and she will cook for him. Yes. And when he goes out of the she will do what you know until he comes on the house. Right. She will tell him, and then he will come back. You see why I got you? can't let this say. That's what you tell him. Exactly. You know what is good? Uh-huh. You're not going to the church. You're going to the church. Nice. They tell you the bees know where to find the nectar. Bees know how to find sugar. Uh-huh. And she tell you, let him come out. You play because you went on Facebook to show you put out Thomas Cross. Go on out! Go on! Now tell your child to record a poor child in the eye of the phone. No, we don't let go outside. Go on! Now you teach your daughter to put out man. When she goes on board and on, she gets mad. So what do you think she's going to do? Put out the man! Until she meets a madman who says, You can't put me out of my house. Then you'll see problems now because when he said, I'm going nowhere. And since you try to put me out, you go out. But wisdom, church, I said again, would not make you make rash and stupid decisions. Amen. First of all, I tell every female this. If you're not prepared to leave him, don't say that you would. Right. I tell every man this. If you are unprepared to leave, never say that you would. Because every time you tell a woman to go deep for a man, you leave her come back, they lose respect for you in your work. Don't make a statement you can't live with. 
When you talk, especially as a man in Muslim, when you say this, you mean we say But you know, you talk, you say you talk about him. Mm -hmm. When you make a statement as a man, you must understand you mean what you said. And what you have to think that what you said is also justifiable. You're not one fair person. Wisdom will guide you. Wisdom will counsel you. Wisdom will teach you how to survive in an evil and wicked environment. Wisdom doesn't make you see your boy child as a girl. No. Mm. Because he, after all, is my son. Wisdom doesn't make you see your child as a man. Because after all, is my daughter. Wisdom makes you see them for what they are. And wisdom says that before you point your brother or your sister out, Because wisdom protects, wisdom secures, wisdom preserves those who love it. Wisdom will never make you keep a rebellious child of their siblings because one bad apple. You know what I tell you all? One bad apple. Wisdom will make you pick up the phone and say, Officer, my son got for 50 bags of weed in here. And then when you come to this house, you will have a ball of me. So, lock it up. I want to tell you, you it. That's why she said, Old mothers and their face flashing on the news. Oh, old mommy got to hold up the car. <laughs> You are charged from possession of cocaine and the police know you didn't do it. Yeah. But because you're in the house with it, all you have done, I'm a poor mama. <laughs> are we ready to break your room? <laughs> Before you tell the police officer, I did not get up. This boy got dropped in my house. You come out of the house and talk. Let me give you some wisdom. Don't call him in his way home. Go to the yard, because you can't sleep in the dark. I said, calling you from outside, lot 75, wherever it is, they got drugs in the yard. So when you find it, you can't help me up, because I'm outside of the yard. But I've seen mothers who have to go through court cases, because their son, they know what to do. They know what the boy is doing, but they don't want to, they don't want to tell me to go to jail. And all the other people are going to jail, but me. None of you are because I call the police and say, oh, hands down. I shot the mechanic police station and say, oh, can you say, 85 faithless, in a tire at the back. <laughs> Have a 10 brick coke inside. Oh, yeah. When you go to the yard, go to the right side. <laughs> On the big tree. And Marfi, you call him Marfi. Oh, can I give him a name? Give me a call, let me give him a name. She got red hair. The large kind of thing. <laughs> Wear glasses and no nails. But telephone number is six, seven, five. You think I'm going to do When I'm done, you become the biggest snitch in the world. And I go for the road and say, I'm so over so. You didn't write what you did. Because you can make me go to jail. Why couldn't your child have shown it to me? No! You can make me go down my own age. If I go to jail, you go to jail for taking a righteous stand because you can't control yourself and don't finish this round. That's wisdom. Wisdom will make you stand for the principle of God. Saints today, I pray and I hope that you receive this with all seriousness. As a saint, you are wired to function according to Yahweh's wisdom. Not the wisdom of the world. The wisdom of the world makes you say what is unrighteous is righteous. What is good is bad, what is bad is good. They make you accept any stupid thing. The wisdom of the world makes you become an enemy of Yahweh. With that I say thank you. And I pray that 
ears and their eyes that they understand the Bible. And that you would hold on to wisdom. Younger women, receive counsel. Let us stand. Stretch your legs a little bit. Younger women, do not despise the counsel of older women. In the church, their job is to teach you. Receive the counsel. Receive the direction. Let them train you. They wake you up early in the morning. I tell you the bird wife must not wake up before you. Some of you are too young to understand what I just said. The bird wife must not get up before you. And the sun must not rise upon you. And with this generation, Lord have mercy. You gotta work 50 years to get to understand that. <laughs> get up early. It's healthy for you. Young man, I give you the wisdom of my grandfather, Joseph Monta. I used to sleep. My mouth wide open. Father Joseph Monta one day came and hit me. Midday, he said, Get up. He said, Why, if you keep sleeping like this, a man will come to your house and have breakfast with your wife, enjoy yourself, made his skin, and go home. Are you still snoring? That's what he always teach me. When he said that, I had an image, a picture form, a whole movie. I saw in my head when my grandfather said, and from that day, it scared the life out of me so bad now, I get up at five, six times in the night. And walk on the house check. Because right. I was scared when my grandfather said, you like sleep? Man will come home and your wife will cook breakfast and you still snoring. Wash all the dishes and pull it down and you still sleep it. And I learned from that simple statement. He was saying to me, don't ever train yourself as a man to sleep forever. Mm. Open your eye and check around the environment. I go to look in the yard, look back, everything's safe, good. I can sleep now. Yeah. When you pick me home, don't snow forever. Yeah. You must know where your children are mm. and when they arrive. So you say, oh, shut I see. Mm -hmm. This is how the sages and the old people in Israel to teach the generation. They teach you life and wisdom of it. Positive. Okay. Thank you so much. I praise Yahweh for this brother, for my brother. Wise man who knows exactly how to function in this society. A man who's honored across the nation. And those who hate him have no sense. Amen. Amen. Don't hate wise people. A man who could teach so many people in the nation. Who could have taught so many great minds. How could you hate him? You don't gotta be stupid. There had to be something that kept him in education so long and made him so successful. It's called wisdom. And I praise Yahweh for giving that to him. Amen? Amen. He blesses the bounty of all. Praise his holy name.